Okay, so I had something planned. You know, I was gonna put on the Michael Myers costume, come out, do a Michael Myers dance, and celebrate this movie. Then I watched the movie, and I realized, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I can't. After watching this movie. And if you're watching this and you think, okay, I'm going to get to feel this movie before. If you haven't watched it yet, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to get his opinion on it. And then I'll watch it. I'm, I'm going to give you a decent opinion on this. But I'm telling you, watch the movie first before you watch the rest of this review. I didn't hate it. Right? I didn't hate it. I think it was terrible. I'm kind of in the middle. I really don't know what to think of it right now. But if, if you, I'm telling you right now, if you're curious as to what they, what direction they're going to go into, I'm not going to tell you not to watch it. I'm not going to tell you to watch it. I'm not going to try to dissuade you from watching it, I should say. Watch it. If you're absolutely curious, if you're like, if you're one of those, oh, I'm going to watch a review, and if someone doesn't like it, someone is iffy on it, I'm not going to bother. No, absolutely watch this. Get your own opinion out there, because... Who knows? You might actually really like this. We'll see how I feel about it at the end of this review because, oh boy, we got a lot to unpack. Um, I'm just gonna sit down because this is. So I was already worried, okay? Because you know the whole pandemic pushed these movies back, right? And then. The initial version of Halloween Kills that they put out there, that was put the test audiences and test screaming, whatever, was changed. The ending was changed because they had a different idea in mind that they were going to do for the next movie, right? They changed their mind. And this was the idea they had. This was their big grand plan. For the end of this trilogy. There was one thing I can say about going into spoilers. This doesn't feel complete. This doesn't feel like the story we've been telling for three movies. This feels like one story with the first two films and then different story. It's connected to those first two films, but it doesn't feel like we were heading in that direction. It's like, do, 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 is what it feels like. We're going steady. Halloween, 2018. Okay. Halloween Kills. All right. Halloween ends. That's what it feels like. It was not one coherent story because this was not the ending they originally had planned. This is not what they were originally going to do. They changed it to acclimate with the current climate the way things are. Try to work some things in. Jump four years to acclimate to the time. It was 2022 in this one now and not, you know, 2018 anymore. And as weird as it is, I would I would have liked to have known how they would have acclimated that in the original sense. Because by the time you get to the third film, it's not going to be on Halloween. It'll be November 1st. Technically, it was already November 1st. By the end of Halloween Kills. So I don't know how they would even have done that. <clears throat> to begin with. You know? And... There's even characters that are brought back that you might have thought were even dead. And it's not like, well, they, did, they actually kind of did it again with, like, Hawkins in the last one. You know, the lady, and I'll tell you this right now. Okay, we're in full spoiler territory. You know, in, in Halloween Kills, after Michael escapes the fire, he goes to the cemetery caretaker's house. Kills her husband. Stubs a light tube in her, in her throat. She's still alive. She can't talk, but she's still alive. Her sister is like berating her. My sister can't talk. It's all your fault. Yelling at Lori. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Yeah. She's still alive, by the way. And Lindsay is in this, but you could have taken her out and she would have had no effect on this film. And yeah. yeah. So let's go ahead and let's just break down this movie from scene to scene here. Because it's the best way to do this. We start not where we should have. I figured we were going to pick up 
right? Because I thought, oh, maybe there was a reason why they gave us the extended edition. Maybe they decided, okay, maybe we will start from that point. And we'll see Lori go to the house, but Michael's already gone. And just finds Alice in there. And we, 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 we go with her cuddling. The camera kind of presses in and then dun -dun 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 -dun, start the movie, right? Halloween ends. And it's, then it would say four years later, right? Nope. That's, no, there is no follow up from anything at the end of that other than dialogue telling us, oh, my daughter is dead. And we, four years later, we moved on. That sort of thing. There's no her finding, there's no Lori. See, we don't get the scene of Lori seeing her daughter's dead body and that moment where she realizes her daughter is gone. That's taken away from us because you decided to jump four years. So now that's gone. We don't get to see her have that moment where she realizes her daughter is dead. Which is an important moment for a character like this. We don't get that. Because you decided to jump forward. You decided to give us Corey. Corey. Which was a character that when the synopsis was announced for this, people were like, eh? Yeah, apparently the synopsis has that there was a incident in which a kid died. Corey, this Corey was blamed for it. And now everybody treats him like he's sort of like a Michael Myers. Like he's this killer. Like he's done stuff. We are presented at the so that it is an accident. He did not do it on purpose. What happens is he is babysitting this kid on Halloween 2019. Yeah. It makes sense because if we cut to where it always take place on 2018, I think people would be like, oh, it's just Michael Myers that did it. But he's very sitting this kid, right? And this kid acts normal, but then the kid's a little dick later. They're watching John Carpenter's The Thing, which is a callback to the original Halloween where they're watching the original thing from another world. So it's a callback. And he's getting kind of grossed out by the, by the, uh, by the effects. Hey, maybe you should, uh, you should watch it. He's like, you know, I'm not gonna be your friend. I'm gonna pretend to be your best friend or whatever. He's like, well, you got five minutes and you go to bed, right? So he goes into the other room and somehow the knife that was used to cut the cake or whatever it was is gone. He hears noises and you think, is it Michael? This is one year later, so it's very believable Michael could show up. Is this what happens? Is this something happened with this Corey that puts him to sleep for three more years? No. This kid is putting a prank on him is basically what it is. He goes upstairs, the kid locks him in the, in the room, he's trying to break the door. Parents come home at this point, and all they hear is they hear Corey say, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna kill you, kid. Or I'm gonna kill you, whatever the, the kid's name is. Not a threat. It's, it's like when you're angry, I'm gonna kill you. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, like your friends are messing around. And something happened, man, I'll kill you. You know what I mean? You, you do that, you mess around. Joking stuff. He did not mean it. But he, they hear him say it, and he kicks the door. The kid's right there. It hits him, and he flies down off the banister. Goes splat right in front of his parents. And then we get Halloween ends. Credits. With blue lettering. And it, I like the cool intro. But the problem is, you're so distracted by what you just saw, you're not paying attention to this opening credits. What it is, if I remember correctly, is like pumpkins or jack o' lanterns opening up. And a new one is coming in until eventually it's just a pumpkin. And then that opens up and you see the pumpkin guts inside. And then that goes into the movie. But yeah, I'm not paying attention to that or the music. That is still kind of... The score in this is actually still pretty good. I did like that. But... I'm not paying attention after you just presented us with this opening. It has nothing to do with Michael Myers. And spoiler alert. Michael Myers does not actually do a fucking thing to almost an hour into this movie. And even then, it's not really anything of note. So we cut to now 2022. Lori is writing her memoirs. She's trying to move on. Her and Alice are living together. Apparently... Uh, Lindsay is working at the bar, we find that out later. 
And Cor Corey is the she's a, he's a mechanic. Uh, from what I can gather, because they don't actually explain it, I guess they ruled it an accident, which it was. But the kid's parents didn't believe that, or at least the mom didn't. Uh, yeah. And as a result, of course, because we got to keep this. It's not as heavy-handed as the evil Tysonite stuff. They don't say it once, which is smart. Not at all. Which I was waiting for at the end of this. I was waiting for her to say it, but she doesn't say it. I'll get to it, but I was waiting for her to say it. Uh, which would have been appropriate here, because we'll get it. we'll get to it. But so we're introduced to Corey's life, which we're following him now because he's Allison's love interest. And at first, I remember reading in the synopsis that he was. Allison's boyfriend. I'm like, well, he she got over Cameron pretty fast. Well, they're not. I I assumed they were. See, what I assumed was they were already together, and this accident was gonna happen. But no, they present the accident first, then they get together here. So, I guess that kind of works a little bit better. But I'm gonna have to watch this again. Maybe I I, I don't know. I really don't know. on the fence of this movie, I guess. Um, so we're pre presented now with Corey showing his life. He works for his uncle at the the junkyard. He's a mechanic, stuff like that. And we're already presented that Allison has a problem with her uh, uh, muffler. And she used to date a cop who looks like he's older than she is. I don't know. I, I I feel like they should have presented this as this is the first relationship she's been in since Cameron. Like she's finally moving on, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Present this as she hasn't been able to have any relationship. She hasn't been able to be with anyone at all since Cameron and one of her mom's deaths and her parent. You know that thing. She lost her boyfriend. She lost her parents. She hasn't been able to move on, and now she's got Corey, and she's been able to move on. No, they don't present that at all. She's just dated this cop guy for some reason. Only so that later, Corey can have a confrontation with him, most likely. But, yeah. So, Corey minds his own business. We follow him for a little bit of the time, actually. We get a little blurb from Laurie at the beginning of this, but then we follow Corey. Corey, Laurie, Corey, Laurie. And... So he goes to this gas station where he's assaulted by these, I think they're high schoolers. They're like, hey, can you buy us beer? And he's like, no, I'm not doing that. And he's like, well, come on. You can't buy us beer, man. Are you too good? And they attack him. He, he's got his, by the way, a glass bottle of chocolate milk. Who does that? Who puts chocolate milk in a glass bottle nowadays? It's just plastic. But they basically, they accost him cause him to cut his hand right and Lori comes to save the day and she's like you know after they go into the place she's like hey puts up this knife you gonna do it or should I and they she he uh pops the tire and then brings him home with her to and this would have worked too like if Allison had not dated that cop she's bringing him home they, they kind of you know nudge later that she brought him home so that he and Allison could get acquainted. And they do. Like, they help him move on and stuff. But they, you know. And eventually, they decide to go to this costume party together. You know. We also we also see, you know, like I said, the sister of the caretaker lady yells at Laurie and say, this is your fault. Basically, they say, oh, she, she poked uh, Michael Myers poked and prodded him and caused him to do all the damage in the first two. When? When? Hmm? Huh? When? When did she do anything? She did nothing. Nothing. Sartain was the one who brought him to her doorstep. He didn't even go after her after that either. She had nothing to do with it. Yet, yeah, she poked the bear. She's the one that caused him to do up. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would make sense if they had revealed that she was the one who knocked over that. Uh, was the one who 
responsible for the prison break thing for knocking over the thing. But they pretty much told us, without saying so in the previous two, that it was Sartain. So I don't know. It just it didn't make sense why they point pod. Although it just does call back to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, where Linda's dad was yelling at Loomis saying, Hey, you killed her. Your monster killed my daughter. That kind of thing. So maybe it's kind of like that, but I don't know. It's, it's a little much for me. But yeah. So, Corey goes with uh, Allison to the bar for this costume party where he's dressed like a scarecrow. <clears throat> and uh, it gets heavy, he heavy heated with the mother of the kid that died and she freaks out. And she's like, it's your fault. You kill her. You can laugh. You can be happy. You killed my son. You killed my son. And he's like, okay, I'm out. And he leaves. Then he gets accosted again by these people. By these teenagers who throw him over the bridge. And you think he's dead. He's not. Uh, and there's this homeless guy. And it's really weird because this, this homeless guy is there. We've seen him. Uh, they do certain things. That are very obvious are going to come in, in contact. They show the radio tower a few times. Which doesn't really come into contact as much as you think it would. And then several times when they're at the junkyard. They show this chopper chops up the junk, and I'm like, that's gotta come into into something later, <clears throat> you know. There was a moment that I thought it was gonna do that, <clears throat> but they do, but not the way I thought. It would. But anyway, so Corey gets dragged underground to the sewer, where thanks to the trailers, we know Michael Myers is there, and. Something happens here, and it's not really spelled out. There's something later where Allison looks at Corey's hand at the cut and says, mm, infected. And I'm not necessarily sure, was Michael hurt? Did blood, his blood mix with Corey's blood, and that's what happened? But they, they show, like, he stares into Corey's eyes. We see a flashback of the kid's death, and then all of a sudden Corey's like, and he, he's different. And they even say, like, there's something with his eyes. Lori sees him the next day and is like, I saw Michael's eyes in Corey's eyes. Like, something has changed. And even later, the dad of the kid that was accidentally killed is like, I, I, again, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. I wanted to prove my wife wrong. I wanted to talk to him. And when he looked at me, it wasn't him. It, it wasn't the kid that used to mow my lawn. It was something else. It's like, I think what we're trying to say is that the evil of Michael transferred into Corey. To the point where Michael really isn't himself. I think he's weakened is what it is. Because at one point, like, the homeless guy yells at Corey, I am Michael Myers. And I'm like, is that James, really James, is that James and Courtney under there? What? That would have been a twist that the homeless guy's Michael Myers and this guy's just wearing, I know he's just a crazy homeless man, but... Corey accidentally, once again, accidentally kills the homeless guy. And then he talks to Allison and he brings her to the house where the family used to live. <laughs> Tells her what happens, basically. And there is this romance between them. But it's just, you know, they sit on top of the radio tower. And I do like the romance, but you know that it's going to go in a direction where it's not going to work out. You know what I mean? So there's really no reason to get infested. Because you, you know in the back of your mind thinking, okay... They're good together, but I don't think it's going to work out. You know, something's going to happen. And then we, we get to one of the things that people are going to be pissed about. Most of the kills in this movie are not done by Michael Myers. It's someone wearing a Michael Myers costume, and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be James... G I'm pretty sure it's James Duke Courtney in the suit doing the kills, but it's Corey. First of all, so Allison, and really he's attacking people who have wronged him and Allison because Allison was up for this promotion. This other chick gets it because she's sleeping with the head doctor, Dr. Mathis. She's sleeping with him. And so Corey shows up at the house. He kills Dr. Mathis, but it's not because he's not Michael. He's not able to open the door and bust through. Michael is there and he stabs the lady and it seems to do something to him. When he stabs her, maybe it's, uh, there's another kill. No, there's another guy that 
It's the cop. It's the cop. That's before this. The cop. When Michael stabs the cop, he seems to be rejuvenated. Like, it powers him. Like, he's weakened because he hasn't killed in four years, which is interesting. You know? Because Laurie said in the last one, the more he kills, the more he transcends. So he hasn't killed for four years. He's weakened, which is why Corey is able to take his mask. He's only killed one person. And Corey takes his mask, and this is where we're going to get pissed. But Corey goes on a killing spree as Michael Myers. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so Corey goes around, and he... Basically, he lures those punks to the junkyard. He kills them. One of the punks accidentally kills his uncle... But he kills all of them with various means. Wrench. He runs over one person. You know. There's a couple that are off screen like the African American chick. She gets stabbed or whatever in the neck. But there's there's some decent kills. There's not as many kills in Halloween kills, but that's not, not that's one of the, that's not what this is supposed to be. This is something different. There's not gonna be as many kills as Halloween kills, but you know, there are some decent ones here. Alright. Then he goes to his Mom goes back to his house, kills his mom, and then he heads to Lori's place. And, and at first, I was iffy about this, uh, what what they did here. So we get we get the basically it's it's the the first trailer they showed, where there's the Michael Myers who's supposed to be comes in, opens the door, and Lori's right there with the gun shoot right and then we get the, the fight in the kitchen but it's a little more different than that because technically that's two different michael myers because it's Corey first and then michael myers after it which this is where my problems are going to begin okay so first of all Lori, you know Lori and allison have an argument and because allison wants to leave she wants to get away Corey keeps saying you gotta get away from this she's gonna drag it down which he's right, you know, she keeps obsessing over it, but she's also right. So, it's hard to say, but, you know, so. So we get the scene where Corey, so yeah, because Corey had the scarecrow mask when he killed the doctor and his whore. And then he goes, he's like, I need something. He takes Michael's mask. And I want to say that he's not as evil as Michael is because he can still talk. When the evil, whatever it is, took over Michael, he didn't talk. He still talks. So, yeah. Maybe I want to, you know, leave and an argument. So she goes, Allison goes to Corey's house to find him. But Corey goes to visit Grandmama, right? Goes to visit Lori. Goes up the stairs, much like anything. But before this, I I was convinced that that fight we saw in the trailer was just made for the trailer. Because the way they were doing this movie, there's no way. There's no way that's actually going to happen in this movie. There's no way. That had to be something major for the trailer. And she's sitting there. And she calls the police. She's like, I like to report a suicide. Gives the address, hangs up, takes the gun. I'm like, oh my god. Is this how they're gonna kill off Lori? This is how they're gonna do it. Now before I get to what happens, I was of the opinion that Lori should die. Not like this, but that she should die fighting Michael. That she succeeds in killing Michael, but she's too badly wounded to survive. And that's how she should go out. They should both go out in this movie. Ending Laurie Strode's story and Michael Myers' story. Without going into heavy spoilers yet, we don't get that. You hear a gunshot, you hear something, you see something splurt out, it's pumpkin guts. Do you really think I would kill myself? And she threw the gun, and it, it's Corey. Of course, we know it's Corey. And they have a fight, and... You know... And... Uh, I've got the knife. And she's, you know... Stay away from my granddaughter, basically. And he's like... 
she's out of bullets because she fired three sh two or three shots at the stairs for some reason and she's got no bullets left and like basically he's hurt but he's still alive he's down and she's standing there and then they hear Allison show up and he's like takes the he's like if I can't have her And then Lori, like a dumb bitch, grabs the knife, picks it up, and Allison walks in just as this happens. And yeah, not a not a smart idea, Lori. Although, if she just stood there with the knife still at his neck, it still would have been, you know. So yes, Allison's like, okay, I'm done. I'm out. She left. Because they had an argument before this. So, you know, she's trying to say there's something wrong with him. And she's like, no, you are what's wrong. You cannot move on. You try to say you move on, but you can't. It's all bullshit. And so she went to get Corey. Now Corey's dead. I think she thinks that her grandma did it, and now she's gone. Right? Then, Michael. And, look. This was touted as the final battle between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. But I don't think they imagined it would be like this. I never imagined something. I thought it'd be a whole movie of Michael killing people and them trying to find him and eventually the showdown between him and Laurie where they both end up dead, like I said. No. It sure looks like he's going to kill Laurie, but no. Uh, we get the kitchen fight. Basically, what we saw in the trailer, which is very weird that they showed stuff from the climax in the trailer. I don't understand why they did that. Certainly the way it was shot in the trailer made it, I thought it was a dream. But like, oh, people on Facebook were like, oh, I, I know from someone who's seen it, it, there's no dream sequence in the movie. Okay, sure. It would have made more sense if it was a dream sequence. The way it would, the way it looked in the trailer, it looked like a fucking dream sequence, okay? This, I really don't know. I, this, you know, letting... Obvious stunt that was obvious when he throws Lori over the over the kitchen island thing. I'm like, okay, that's a stunt double. You can tell it's a wig. But yeah, and then Lori Look. I just don't understand this, okay? You can't convince me that some sixty eight year old woman can beat Michael Myers who you showed can survive a fucking mob. Even at one point, she stabs him in the heart, and he's just like, <laughs> sits back up. I'm like, well, yeah, it's Michael Myers. I'm almost like, surprise, bitch. You can't kill me. But then she just stabs, she stabs his arm down. His other arm is stabbed down, right? You got, she takes the fridge and pins it to one of his legs, trying to kick her with the other leg, which is kind of funny. And then she stabs it, right? But then, uh oh, he breaks one of his hands out, tries choking her. She's like, do it. Do it. I'm like, yes, do it. And this. You can choke her out and then die. No. Allison comes and saves the day, breaks his fucking arm, and yeah. But he's not completely dead yet. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't think they would do something like this because Mustafa Akkad had that whole rule you can't kill Michael Myers for real. And, okay, if this is the final of this trilogy and they're going to start from a new starting point, fine. <clears throat> this is what they do. So we have this funeral procession for Myers, okay? Because before this, I should mention, when uh, Allison's out of, going out of town... She runs into Hawkins, who says, what's going on with, the, with your grandmother? Or she gets a call or something from the grandmother. Or she called it a suicide. So she runs back home. She's able to get there, I guess. But they go, even some cops are like, that's not how this works. And the sheriff, who makes his only appearance in this scene, does this time. And so they take him to that thing I was talking about earlier at the junkyard. And I was thinking, again... I wanted Lori to die too, because I feel like if this is the end, they should both die. 
So I was waiting for her. She goes, but Michael, and he grabs her and pulls her in with him. And they both get mulched. Nope. Michael gets completely eviscerated and destroyed. He's dead. Michael Myers, to quote Josh Hartnett, Michael Myers is dead. Michael Myers is dead. M Michael, M M give me that. alcohol in this. Michael Myers is dead. And so yeah, and then we cut to after it. She's finishing her book and basically she's moving on and her and Allison and her, Allison's leaving town, leaving Haddonfield, taking the advice of Corey. Could argue he should have been alive to go with her. I don't. I don't think. Oh, there's so much that I don't think they should have done in this movie. But and Lori is moving on because she and Frank. I did skip some of the stuff with her and Frank. Like they meet at the grocery store and they kind of foot a little bit. And that's she comes out smiling and he's like, "Oh, you having fun smiling? This is my sister." You know, that whole thing is like. But uh, yeah, so you know. She's gonna move on with Frank, but uh, I don't know. There's two things that I'm disappointed that was never confirmed. One, they never confirmed that Ben Tramer was one of her husbands. And two, they never confirmed what I still fucking believe, by the way, and that Aaron is still alive. If Hawkins can survive being ran over, if that one lady can be can survive being stabbed in the throat with a light tube, Aaron can just, can survive being swooshed into the fucking bathroom wall, okay? You're not convincing me otherwise, he's still alive. By the way, we do see that little kid, was not he? Julian, but the first film, he has a small little cameo towards the end with the funeral procession. I don't know, but... And I think the reason Laurie didn't die is because, if you didn't know this, uh... Presumably, because they never let us see the footage from the original cut of Halloween 2018. But originally, I believe Laurie supposed, was supposed to die. And the test audience did not like it, so they completely fucking changed it. And now, I, I think they were too chicken shit to pull the trigger this time. But she should have died too. This is the end. She even says in Halloween Kills, Michael's going to have to die. And I'm going to have to kill him. I have to die too. She says that. And I think in the original Halloween ends that they were going for, that was going to happen. Because they changed it. They got chicken shit and said, nah, we're already doing too many things. It's kind of going to be controversial to the people. Let's not kill Roy Stroud. But I would have been okay with it. I just... I don't know. Um, it's a middle of the road. It's got to be a middle of the road for me. I didn't hate it. But uh, I thought 2018 and Kills were better. I'm sorry. I do. But uh, I just I don't know why they went this way. I, I, I don't know why most of the kills in this weren't Michael Myers. I don't understand what they were thinking with this. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Why did you think this was a better idea than completing your story that you already had? I just, I just don't know. I don't know. Uh, I really don't. I don't know. But it's a middle of the road. I didn't hate it. I don't know. I, I'm going to at least watch it one more time to try to let it sink in. I thought the acting was pretty good. Jimmy Lee Curtis was probably at her best here. You know? She wasn't playing Crazy Cuckoo Nuts, so she was actually a little more sane than usual. It's nice to see that. Like I said, you got Kyle Richards in here. She doesn't do anything. There's no reason for her to come back. She could have died in Halloween Kills, and it wouldn't have changed anything here. You know what I mean? She's not really that important. 
to this movie. She's a bartender. She shows up in two scenes. And that's it. What was the point of her coming back? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, again, I must say, middle of the row. Middle of the row, excuse me. So, what are your thoughts on Halloween ends? Little comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Watching, I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in an iPhone.